Hello everyone, this is Reza and welcome to my channel. In this exciting tutorial, I'll show you how to make quick, realistic trees for your video games and film projects. No prior knowledge is needed and I'll walk you through all the main attributes in this step-by-step -step tutorial. Let's get started. <music> Here I am inside Speed Tree. Now, you can see that I put together this realistic tree under 10 minutes, believe it or not, with all the details, shaders, textures, so on and so forth. And that is the objective of this tutorial. I won't be going through all the sliders and tools and commands because it's going to take hours. Instead, I have cherry picked the ones that you need to visit to get the job done fast. Now, let's go through the user interface really quick and then we switch into the generation tab to see what nodes we need to create this tree uh, as fast as possible. All right, so in the left hand side, I've got the generation window and all the panels related to that generation window open. This is a procedural way of creating your tree, a preferred way of creating your tree. There are basically two types, two main categories, procedural techniques and freehand techniques. With freehand, you just pull and push vertices like classic 3D software packages um, like Maya or Max. In here, we use procedural uh, node-based workflow so it gives us lots of speed and efficiency to get the job done. Uh, on the top uh, left, we have a bunch of buttons. So let's go through them really quickly and see which one does what. So I have this view window right here and the options in this group control how the model renders in tree window so I can render and if I click on it I have different uh, settings to sort of filter how I render and see things things that I uh, basically do want to see or don't want to see you want to see branches you want to see leaves you toggle them on and off how to zoom so on and so forth in the scenes the scenes group basically provide quick access to scene object wind and light and many of these can be accessed through here as well. So, um, you know, I can click in here and apply forces. I can include cameras, project, so on and so forth. I can enable wind through here, through here, or even through the right hand side of the uh, viewport. Then we have resolution which is kind of self-explanatory. You would like to see the resolution state of your model. We have high, medium, low, and draft. Now, remember that this menu is only available in the uh, cinema version of the modeler. So if you don't see that in your window, probably you're not using the cinema version. And then we have mode where we deal with general objects we have access to individual nodes that we're creating in the generation window, or you can take control with freehand and uh, use certain tools to deform certain nodes. We will get to that and we will talk about that. Then we have edit, and this edit is going to be extremely useful when you are um, using the not procedural technique basically you would like to approach this more traditional then you can manually add things uh, you know and edit them if you would like to probably something that we won't be looking at because the whole idea is to be quick with things and then a little bit of post process then you get for example enable ambient occlusion you can enable collision and it removes all the um, leaves that are intersecting obviously you will get fewer leaves on your tree but it would be more accurate and this arrow here which kind of expands everything into just icons and you have more real estate at your disposal 
So quick tour on the user interface. Let's move on to the next chapter. I'm going to start fresh with a brand new scene. The result is not going to be identical to this because obviously you have randomization and seed and I've randomized it. So there's no way that I can create exactly the same look but it's even better. I'm excited to see what I'm going to come up with once we start with the tutorial. Let's move on to the next chapter. All right, we're going to start with a blank scene. You have few samples at your disposal that you can take a look at. We're going to start with a blank and our first node is generated for us. Little bit of a tip about customization for your navigation, you have left click just to be able to orbit around, middle click hold, it's going to pan the camera and right click is going to create the uh, right hand side menu. Of course, if you would like to zoom in and zoom back, you can use the scroller to zoom in and zoom back. And yes, you can customize that if you are a Maya user or Max user, simply you go to edit preference and in the tree window control scheme, you should have access my Autodesk Maya and Max to use a slightly different combination that match those software packages. We need to create the first component or generate the first component out of this tree. We have two ways of doing this. One is to go to the add menu to add a geometry. And the good thing about that, that is it's kind of in order. So you always start with trunk and then you create branches and then you go to leaves. So you can approach it this way or you can right click add to geometry and approach the um, node generation that way. Uh, what I would like to use is just right click and if you would like to get variation of your geometry, you can always go to this subcategory here and get more variations. You can create an old tree or trunk, uh, a split one, uh, you can hand draw on it, you can have several ones at the same time, a tube like in my case, I would like to go with a tall tree. So that's the first bit that is done. I'm going to uh, create a few branches out of this. But right off the bat, if you wish to have a little bit of control over this, you can always go in there and change the length of that. So you can go to plus percentage of parent and start sh uh, increasing the height or shrink it down to where it is. In if I scroll all the way down, you also have noise and gravity. So with noise and gravity, you can give this a little bit of irregularity, especially I am looking at this late category right here. You can see if I sort of bump this up, you can see it creates really irregular shape for my trunk, which might be the case that you want. I'm just going to ever so slightly make that uh, not quite flat or straight, but just so you know, you have the turbulence that you can kind of add waves or frequency to your noise as well. So maybe somewhere around this will do just fine. So it's not quite straight. There's a little bit of bend going on here as well. There are so many attributes that you can play around with, but uh, I'm just targeting the ones that you will use the most. We have orientation as well, where you can put that your trunk at an angle um, if need be. Now, the next step is to create the big branches. So I'm selecting my trunk, go to add geometry to select it. And if I go in here into branches, we have different types of branches, little branches, tweaks, again, tube, just a single branch or big. And the big one defines the main branches for your tree. So you need to be mindful of a few things. One is how many branches you have. And I highly encourage you to look at some references to get a sort of good estimation of what is correct and what is not. What I usually do, uh, which takes me to the second point is the size of the branch because you are going to have branches coming out of the kink of each main branch. So you don't want the branch to be too wide. So it's always a good idea to kind of go in there and um, optimize that to a reasonable level. 
you have access to if I go all the way here you have access to gravity so you can bring this pull this down uh, or you can move, move it completely up um, so you can kind of design the contour or the silhouette of your tree so I would like this to hang just ever so slightly towards the end and if you feel like the um, main branches or the big branches are too flat again just like before you have noise and late so I can up the amount of turbulence and you can see it's uh, going to add a little bit of crookedness to the whole branch as well which is actually quite nice add a slight irregularity to the tree that you want uh, we have gen which deals with the generation or how it gets generated so if you feel like you have too many of these guys you can always go in there and have fewers and you can play around with uh, the slider as well to see which one works for you and based on that you move forward now one really good tip that I can give you is to play around with different seeds and randomizations so I might actually bring this one down so that's not too bad and I'm going to go into the search bar and type in seed and I try to randomize the one that I really like again if you feel like the length of each main big branch is too short you can always sort of bring it up and down the most useful one if you want to get this done really quickly would be spine and gen so um, I can go into orientation change the orientation of the main branches as I explained you can roll them you can change the alignment of them and in generation you basically deal with uh, the frequency or the amount of your branches that you may have so I'm just going to lower the frequency so I have a little bit of gap you can see something like this is not really too realistic so I'm just going to move this down ever so slightly I'm going to go to my filter and type in seed and I try to randomize to come up with a good reasonable design so you can see I'm just going through some of them to see which one works for me and there is really no right or wrong way one particular design may catch your eyes uh, for example in this case this one is not too bad so let's stay with that and we can at any point of time go ahead and change that now once this big done we right click go in there into branches and we create bifurcating branch out of your big branch and it's just going to add sub branches or smaller branches from the kink of the main branch just like before you can go in there I can zoom back a little bit and design to your taste so I'm just going to go and change the th threshold ever so slightly maybe a little bit with boundaries like so and I'm going to go to spine maybe change the length ever so slightly now be mindful of what you see in your generation window as well if you go too many or too long you get a, an explanation mark saying that just be careful it's not really an error it's more of a warning but more or less keep an eye on what you're doing in here uh, so you have a, a good reasonable control over your tree all right now it's a good idea to duplicate this twice and make this apparent of bifurcating branch you have two ways of doing this you can select this and go to add geometry branch and bifurcating branch or if you want the new branch to inherit what you have in here you can easily press ctrl d to duplicate it and if I zoom in a little bit so you guys get to see the second one you drag it on top of the old one and it makes it apparent and it creates those sub branches for you now you can see I'm getting this warning that I talked about just a few minutes ago and while you can proceed with that it's always a good idea to just play around with your 
plus and minus percentage of radius and you can see if I go and tone down this you can see it goes away this explanation mark saying that all right you may have just too many or too long for these branches it might be a little bit tricky to control but to be honest with you what I have kind of works just fine I'm not gonna get too picky I'm just going to avoid this explanation mark and kind of playing by the book and what speed tree is happy to operate with cool I'm going to continue selecting the bifurcating number two and I'm going to press ctrl D move this one move this one on the top and create another one and this is create a, this is going to create another sub branch for me I'm just going to select that and maybe for those ones I'm just going to ever so slightly bring this down and um, feel free to go to noise and late and just add a little bit of turbulence in these guys so I'm going to go to late add a little bit of crookedness to that as well like so so it's coming together quite nicely what I'm going to do I'm just going to undo uh, this and try that again and I might actually select one of these guys and just reduce the if I go into spine reduce the absolute value a little bit reduce the parent a little bit so I get a little bit more refined result and something that I kind of like to have now sometimes if you end up having uh, just chunky branches or you feel like you could kind of get a, a slightly better result you can go into mode and change that to interval so you can see interval uh, gives you a slightly different result you have different sort of algorithms and modes to sort of cater for different looks whatever you want and that's basically uh, how you block out sob branches next is to add tweaks at the end of each branch you can see if I zoom in uh, some of these branches uh, there is no way that we can connect the leaf to that also you may have noticed that some of them are actually terminating without going all the way out so if that's the case you can always use extend parent so extend parent and set the type to any and you can do that for pretty much all of these guys so um, you get a slightly better result and slightly higher density if need be now with that out of the way I'm just gonna go add geometry to selected branches and tweaks and that gives you um, some sort of a an area so the leaf can connect to that well that was easy now I'm gonna create leaves right click add geometry leaves and I'm gonna go and change we have different um, types of or levels of distribution but I am going to go with alternating and that's going to just basically provide cards for the tree where you can now go in there into the leaf into skin the tab that you use the most and you can change the size if need be so I can select that and just you can see how I'm changing its size and based on the scale that you have you may want to uh, change the size slightly differently if I go into gen you also will get access have access to some very useful nodes including the distribution node in generation so I can go to interval to get a slightly denser result um, classic proportional flood for example I can reduce the density like so I can go to uh, bifurcation get a slightly different density and uh, sort of play around with it for now I'm going to stay where I am uh, let's move on to the next chapter and see two ways of creating materials and assign them to your tree well the first way is to use what Spitry has to offer so tap into Spitry repository use one of those ready to go 
um, materials. Let's uh, let's try that out. So I have a material tab already open, and remember these um, tabs, uh, unlike some other application packages, when you see you can toggle between back and forth from the top region. This is from the bottom region. So if you ever come across a scenario where the meshes tab was selected, you can easily switch to material. That can be a little bit confusing to some. Uh, I do not want to create a material. I want to re use a ready to go material. So I'm just going to click to browse into our library. Now you may have noticed that it went to Speedtree Modeler inside the program files, samples, VFX, and inside Barks, I have a few samples to deal with. It's a PBR map, to uh, put it simply. So I can just use that sample Bark, open, and the beauty of using internal speed trees materials is it populates all the maps for you, so you don't need to do anything. So if I click on this guy, you can see I can go in there and change the brightness if I want. I can change the contrast if I want. I can change the saturation if need be. And there is no close button. You just click away and it goes away. I can do the same thing for uh, ambient occlusion. I can go on target, let's say gray. And if I zoom in, well, let's, um, let's apply it first and then we zoom in and see the effect. Uh, to apply, I'm just going to select that hand and drag and drop on the selected or highlighted image. You can see you can uh, highlight it and select it only on the branches. Make sure the trunk is selected. And once you apply it to the trunk, and because the trunk is the parent of the branches, you apply basically that to all of them. Now if I go to AO, select or target the gray channel, I can just go in there and change the brightness of the trunk contrast, you know the drill. Again, there is no close button, you just click away. Cool. What if I want to target the UVs? Because, well, that's one thing that I don't see here. Um, to do that, you can select the trunk, and there's a UV tab there. And of course, you have relative or absolute to change the tiles or, or the tiling of your texture. So I can go into relative set that to zero and you get a slightly bigger result and if I set that let's say to three you get a, a much finer result I can just have a look at the resolution make sure that it's working for me yeah it's not too bad definitely does the work so you can see that's uh, fairly straightforward there's nothing too uh, tricky about it there is a two-sided tick box in here. If I go to the dark areas, probably that is easier to see. It adds more detail. If I click on it, you can see that in the areas that I have core shadows, it just gives me more detail. If tree is really not in the shot, probably you don't need to don't worry about you don't need to worry about it because it's computationally expensive. But if you have a close up shot, it would be a good idea to leave that on. For now, I'm just going to leave that off. I'm not really too worried about it, but so you know. The second method is to tap into a repository where we go outside the speed tree in sites like Quixel Megascan and we want to download a material. Let's see how we can sort of go about that. So first things first, I'm going to go into uh, Quixel Megascan and I need to make sure that I'm logged in. Here I am inside Quixel Megascan. Make sure that you log in, no issues with that. And to get textures, I wanna to get to atlases. I don't want to go into surfaces or decals, as you may think. We go to atlases and atlases will give us a great uh, variety of the same style. And in each atlas, there are a few variations and they kind of belong together. So in here, I'm going to go to tree and I'm going to pick leaves and there is plenty of options to choose from that gives us lots and lots of 
varieties for example this is the one oriental plane that i used at the beginning of the class i showed you an example i used this one for that example you can see i highlighted another one why don't we actually go in there and uh, download this create a sort of happy environment you can go in here and change the maps if you want to but for now i'm just going to go and download and unzip now once you download and unzip i am going to select the fixed path Control c and let's go to quixel this time instead of clicking on this get into a library i'm going to click the one right next to it plus and minus to create a material i'm going to call that leaves and go open and i'm going to click on color and i'm in the folder that i downloaded everything i already pointed to that but feel free to select the path paste the url and you can move that folder into your project directory and sort of point to that as well i selected albedo i'm going to pick albedo speedtree says all right i uh, have found some other pbr maps that can relate to this albedo map do you want me to run the show from this point onward uh, why not and it's going to go ahead and attach all the necessary maps for me but definitely check i found sometimes there are a little bit of issue with there also some of these channels won't accept exr if you would like to sort of change that in your mega scan you may not bring them correctly so jpeg will do just fine just a small hint to let you know the important part you really don't want to bring this as is onto your leaves just like drag and drop that we did for the branch because it actually brings the entire image and attach it which looks really funny you want to isolate each leaf, segment it, customize it, and only then bring them in. Let's go to the next chapter and see how we can adjust our textures. To adjust the textures, we go to cutouts, meshes. I have four examples. That's why I'm just going to create four variations, one for each. After that is done, I'm going to go to edit and this window pops up now what this window wants is for us to first things first nominate what leaf we want to pick and then anything that we pick we need to create three variations one low poly one medium poly one high poly and to do that you have points to move and this anchor point needs to be right at the middle of your leaf i'm just going to show you one example and then i speed up the video do it for the other three so it's a bit of a recap for you let's say we want to start with this first things first i'm just going to bring the anchor then i'm going to use these four points to make sure that it's covering the entire leaf And it's uh, okay if you have some uh, black areas or margin around your leaf. You don't need to worry about it. Um, that's totally fine because we have opacity to get rid of it. Now, this looks good. That can be my low poly version. Now, all I need to do is to add points, create a mid and add more points and create the high. Simple as that. And every time you make a mistake, you can click on this guy here to remove the points so what i usually do for mid is very simple click 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 and click for all four sides and one click in the middle for um, just to connect everything together and it's been tessellated but that's fine because you're taking this to, to a game engine now in case if you for example want to remove that again as i mentioned you just go and remove it simple as that i'm just going to add that's going to be my mid and for high resolution you don't want to go too high remember how many leaves we have um, just um, as long as you follow the silhouette ever so slightly that will make speed tree happy one two three four and that's what i would call a high poly done and done now i'm going to go into material tab 
and continue for the remaining three variations. Okay, I have four variations. Now it's time to bring it in because now Speedtree knows that it's not going to use all four on each card, but it's going to create a, a randomization sort of ski speak and uses all of these four randomly on these cards. Makes more sense. I'm going to zoom in, so I'm not going to drag it um, to something else by accident drag and drop into leaves and voila we have all the leaves on our tree nice and ready to go now you may say well how will i be able to change the intensity of course you can just go into skin and change its size if you want you can go to gen and change the mode to interval and that gives you a slightly better density to deal with as you can see you can even go to barification and gives you a slightly different result i actually quite like interval i think it's uh doing a great job i'm enabling ambient occlusion and you can see how incredible this looks now if you feel like the lighting is a bit off and you're kind of not happy with this just click away so you're not selecting any nodes in here and you can go to lighting and you can pick from a preset for example you can create a forest looking uh, type of uh, backplate i definitely feel like forest in this particular case works really well for me and uh, yeah that's uh, that's basically how you create a preset in here if you would like to increase the brightness of the ambient occlusion you can certainly can so you get a slightly brighter leaves if you feel like they're a bit too dark but the cool thing is about about this is you have sort of variety to deal with and that gives you a, a really good uh, level of customizability also, uh, you can tone map it. That's how Unreal sees it, basically. And um, art directed this way. Now, we have two more things to talk about. The first thing is how to tweak the branches individually or as a whole. And the second thing is how to add forces. So let's quickly go to the next chapter, discuss those things, and we're pretty much done. Cool. To tweak branches, we have three modes. Tweak all of them at one go, tweak individual branches, and art direct the branches by deforming them. So let's start with the first one. If I select the first one and zoom in ever so slightly, and let's select one of these guys, you can see I can rotate them in here. I can change the length in here but the thing is if i start rotating you can see i'm rotating all of them i'm changing the angle for almost all of them 
that may not be the look that you want or it actually may do the trick for you instead of going up and down for the entire tree you can just do that in one go and make the tree more spread looking or more like a pine tree looking so it's totally up to you how you want to do it you can even scale it as well and get a slightly packed result which is really really cool i really like this level of uh, customizability in here uh, you can select these ones add noise and gravity so i can go in there and just make them droop a little and the gravity takes in so it's um it's pretty cool how you can simply change the overall look of your tree i find it quite easier than going through so many of these nodes these gizmos can be extremely helpful to you guys the next one is when you want to apply a specific uh, translation on just one branch this little sphere is going to move the branch up and down and the cool thing about as is the joint will weld in real time so you're not going to see any seams or any artifacts um, let's say you just want to bring this down ever so slightly you want to move this up just a tad you can certainly do that you can then go in here and say you know what I just want to bend it a little bit forward and it just does it for you again just like before if you feel like that some of these uh, branches are just unusually big like for example this one right here which I identified you can just go in there and shrink that one and you get a slightly smaller branch so that's another cool thing now the coolest of all is the last one where you can actually deform a branch and bend it let's just try it on this guy so if I go in there and say you know what um, I'm going to just select this bit and it gives you a path which you can change so I'm going to go in here and change the path and it goes along the branch so you stop around the area which you would like to deform now this becomes your pivot point and then gradually but surely it intensifies the effects hence these circles getting bigger and bigger and the blue one is the area that you drag to apply the effect how cool is that it's just incredible how easily you can art direct a particular sort of uh, look and get a really good result let's say I want to go in there your director says all right I want this branch to hang more because it would be the character in the scene so what you do you just bring that in and you just pull this down and all of a sudden this particular bit is standing out maybe there's a character behind the behind this uh, branch particular branch so it's uh, it's incredible this level of customizability is something that we all need and you actually have it in here so this mode I found very very useful the second one is forces how to add wind and you would be surprised how easy it is to just add wind if I go in here and uh, deselect everything we go into the main mode not into freehand mode you can see I have wind and if I click on it we have presets best better fast fastest which is the level of accuracy of your simulation based on your computer spec and wind wizard and that wind wizard is going to do that with a single click so what type of tree you can go palm bush grass which is very useful and big trees set them for me please and the condition has to be calm in my case you can go stormy you can go breezy calm occasional breezes it's just uh, <laughs> everything is so so simple and believe it or not that's it and there you have it you have the sort of subtle movement of your tree and the cool thing about that is I can just go in there 
and up the intensity of my wind and you can see it gradually picks up and then you all of a sudden have more intensity for your wind all right that is it that's all you need to pay attention to to block out your very first tree inside a speed tree yes it took longer than than 10 minutes for me to unpack and explain but once you know the main um, tools and sliders believe me 10 15 minutes try a few things randomize them throw in a force field and you're good to go make sure to watch the follow-up video uh, because in the follow-up video i will show you how to export this with animation into unreal engine so you can use procedural foliage system to populate these assets and scatter them around your environment so if you are into terrain generation and landscapes and stuff like this this can be very very handy i hope you found this video useful let me know how you go in the comments below until the next video see you guys later